Hello everyone, welcome back to the second, I think second part of, of our tutorial about how to make things in an efficient way using SOLIDWORKS, how to use how to use the surfaces functions that we have in SOLIDWORKS and <clears throat> how to overall make the things faster um, and to have um, quite flexible design while we work. So a little bit of recap from yesterday. We are trying to make the main shape of these earbuds. And I was uh, saying yesterday that I prefer to, to use curves to create the surfaces. So we have two um, main surfaces on the, on the back and on the front. Uh, everything is really curved on here and to make things even more difficult than usual we have only one picture in quarter view and um, no side view or top view or anything to guide us so it's quite imperative to approach all this um, in such a way that can allow easy modification uh, after we do all the construction <clears throat> so yesterday i was showing um, that I'm using curves to create the surfaces and I'm also using other functions to modify the surfaces but I just couldn't remember yesterday two very important things the first Im first Im thing that was important and it's a it's quite a small thing but still if you are in an assembly and if you want to see the sketches um, in the assembly without opening the the part one part from the assembly separately well you really need to click on the show all types of um, of sketches of show all types of um, entities i think we can call them so that's that's the first one that's why when we click in show all types we can finally select the other bits such as to show sketches or whatever we want to to see now the second important thing and if i go and um, go and modify the part i'm going to click two buttons in here just to be sure that i can show is not functioning so yesterday i was saying that if i create the surfaces using curves for example <clears throat> then I can just modify the curves in real time and it will just follow. Well, it, it didn't work yesterday because these uh, functions that I'm about to show, they, are, they were activated by default in the past, I think. And with the new, new update of SOLIDWORKS, they, uh, they just got deactivated. So every time I was trying to modify a curve, after I created it straight in 3D, I just couldn't. So the magic button, the secret, is instant 3D. For some reason, SOLIDWORKS does require a specific button for this. Cannot really imagine why anyone would want not to modify things directly in 3D after the construction is done. But there you go. This is the button. It's called instant 3D. And that means if you if you look on the screen right now, so I'm having, let's say, this surface, it has this curvature in two directions. Now, if I want to modify the curvature, there you go. You can easily see as a primitive preview how the surface will follow. Now, because we are into an assembly, it's not um, updating automatically. For that, we need to press Ctrl B and it will update automatically of course the one of the fillet uh, needs to be updated afterwards we will get into that soon <clears throat> but as an idea this is this is how we get it now if i am going into um, into the part and open it separately right and I will want to modify it right away in 3D, you will see that 
there is no need to press Ctrl B. You will still have the preview just like in the assembly, but this time if you click outside or double click, it should do it. Still not. Still Ctrl B. No, no, it did follow, isn't it? Let's see again. Clicking outside. Yes, it does follow. So in this way, you can easily modify curves around directly in 3D. And yeah, and everything will just follow whatever you're doing. Um, right, those fillets are not going as expected. Anyway, we will take care of that soon. Let's try to go a little bit further. There you go, now it works. <clears throat> Another thing that this um, Instant 3D does, and yesterday again I, I, I just didn't, I, I forgot uh, of the existence of the button. If you have Instant 3D activated and you click on a fillet, you will be able to see all the dimensions on the fillet and all that. And if you click the dimension, let's say fillet 5 millimeters and you click 10, I should pick a different value so that it works. <laughs> Bear with me. So let's say three millimeters. There, it works straight away. So no problem whatsoever. And this will be very, very beneficial and you will see it quite soon because now we don't have, we don't have the, um, the, the 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 side views or um, the side view or the top view, I think or the isometric views. I don't remember how they are called, but yeah, we don't have all those details to rely on to construct the object. And because it's like that, then we will have to adjust things on the fly, and it would become quite a nightmare to be necessary to go every single time into edit sketch, adjust the curve, exit the sketch, see how the surfaces are. That's that's bad. Um, it would be quite hard to really follow and I, I wouldn't want like that really. We also do an instant 2D by dragging dimensions handles. Okay, so let's activate the instant 2D as well. Right, so what do we have now? We, given that we finished with the, let's say, tips and tricks forgotten from yesterday, going back into this. So we have this main body into here. We have quite a big, um, quite rounded at the bottom and yeah, more sharp at the top. Now, the trouble, because we don't have all the, all those, um, views, additional views to be able to do the object, it would become difficult afterwards by introducing the fillets already into the design to really adapt easily. So what we are going to do instead of adding the fillets, um, especially the ones that are in here that are having the tendency to just fall, fall over, I will delete them and I will make the object um, without the fillets, imagining that they will be at some point in time, and make the symmetry and adjust the object so that it will, um, uh, so that we give the main shape of it. And only afterwards, um, I will uh, show you how to, how to make those fillets um, that are around here, around this, this edge, this edge is that I select right now, <clears throat> which most probably will have to be done manually. Um, seeing how it goes, it will be quite hard to rely on the on the fillet function. Now, another thing uh, before going to that, I want to modify this surface to make it a lot more curved. By the way, when you modify the surfaces with a free form and you move anything, it will, for fine tuning, just zoom in and it has no lag. If you zoom out, it will have a lag. Um, but 
to resolve let me show you there you go so this is the lag not not very nice but easy to get rid of that lag by just uh, adjusting them without using the um, those handles those arrows all right so i want to increase the curvature now you may you may wonder why on earth i am actually trying to use this when i could use the two curves and adjust the curves and by adjusting the curves so adjust the surfaces uh, the reason is that i well first of all i want to have a different method of doing things and secondly this will become um, this feature is quite good when it comes to do surfaces that are not following a rounded curve all the way um, in the same direction right so if you if you look here right we have just two profiles but if i am introducing another line so add curves let me see i remember i could flip direction yes so if i'm adding a curve right here in the middle I think it goes by just pressing X, S, -K. yeah, and then I want to modify, so let's say we have it curved in here, but I want to modify this one in here, there, so you can have more complicated shapes by using this free form, it's hard to understand all the time how the curves should be to achieve very complex surfaces so sometimes it will become very useful to have this feature all right so now that we we have done with that curvature what i want to do i will want to create the surface here at the top a very simplified version of it and after that, I am thinking to give it a, a symmetry and finally start adjusting all these lines and curves around to get it closer before finally going into, into doing those, um, those manual fillets, right? So let's go and unhide the sketch in here. I'm going to put it on a wireframe view just to just to see through it, um, I'm pressing spacebar to switch between the two, um, the switch between panels, you know, left, right, top, or whatever. There are other shortcuts um, to do all this, but I cannot remember them right now, so I'm just using spacebar. But if you look over the internet, um, I'm sure you will be able to find them very useful. But for now, I'm interested in just making the video and um not using the shortcuts yet so let's create this surface in here right very simplified yeah on the right plane putting the curve almost straight doesn't really matter now. We are going to adjust all this kind of stuff anyway. Yeah, just extrude it. There you go. Switching from wireframe. Okay. Freeform it. Just so that it's not completely straight in one direction so if i'm free form it um i leave it in curvature a descent to be sure that after i'm doing the symmetry i have no seams and yeah and i'm moving i'm putting everything into movable now how do i want yeah i will want to move all these all these points in here something like that I'm fine with that 
doesn't need to be precise we just need to have a feeling of it for now yeah i'm fine i think i'm okay with that okay let's leave it as it is let's go and trim it yeah it's called trim good sometimes i i forget their names so so many software with so many functions and names all right something like this so i'm okay with that i will need to give it a symmetry just to yeah because we will have to look and compare now let's see where the symmetry was I think it was in direct editing. Linear pattern. No, it should be in surfaces, isn't it? Huh, can I remember where the symmetry was? Or features? Yes, features indeed. So what do we want to mirror? Features, face or plane. No, not features, bodies. It may work with bodies. Yes, it looks like it does. Okay. And mirror face. I want the right plane. Okay. All right. So let's hide this in here. Let's start doing some modifications around. What else do I need to hide? Yes, I need to hide this. I need to hide the sketch. Yep. And I want to hide the right plane because it's annoying. And you know what? Let's. No, I don't want that. Okay. Good. Now, the first thing that we see, well, it's looking quite quite bad in here. Yeah, it's, it's too wide. So being too wide, let's go to the surface that is controlling how wide it is. Ah, yeah, and it's governed by a sketch. Let's unhide the sketch. And if you remember, the freeform surface is, is non-destructive. So that means that if we move the sketch, we should keep the curvature of the coming from the points that we moved by modifying the surface. So let's do exactly that. Let's move it around. There. Okay. More. All right. So now it looks more like what we would have in here. They are so thin, but they aren't equally not so wide. So I think, I think I'm happy with this. Now what I see straight away, and let me make a join. Ah, it's neat surface actually. There you go, Katya again. It's not join, it's neat surface. <laughs> um, and let's put this to in such a way so we see reflections but not the sketches all right so from the top it does look more or less all right but from the bottom i can clearly see some seams in reflection and if we switch to another real view i think is shadows in shade no ambient occlusion let's try this ah, yes is unclicking the real view there so we have the seams now with the surface that i created um given that i'm having the some of them that are created with the free form let's see which ones are by free form this is create this is governed by a swept surface okay so that's not the problem. 
and by the way at the top where I used the freeform surface and I used the curvature constraint we don't have visible seams but we still have like a depression right in the middle so that means we need to adjust it um, so let's do that first by adjusting this reform it's quite easy to to notice that is having that kind of depression right there in the middle so if i'm going and lower this tangency handle and now what i would want i would want this chair to go even lower yeah like this much lower okay so let's do that of course it, it is catching only the top bit uh, but equally I'm having an extrude so now theoretically if I don't extrude it that long I should still have the yes should still have the results from the freeform surface moved accordingly but on a shorter surface so now if I am going here let's see yes yeah right that's fine so let's modify it yeah so this is what we kind of lose when uh, when we use the free form we will have to fiddle afterwards with uh, these modifiers these tangency handles so it gets all right but it becomes very important when you have uh, more complex surfaces you will start to lose a lot of time to fiddle with uh, with curves so you know you you lose some um, flexibility now or you may lose it in the future anyway we leave it for now because we don't really know exactly how it will be and we will have to work that surface anyway and let's try to fix these seams that we have in here there you go so we have these seams in here that's more controllable by the way what you gain with curves it will be a, the control a lot more control right because if we go into the sketch for example we know that this point is here on the on the middle but we also we can also see that the tangency handles are not horizontal right so it can be done in a few ways let's see I think the easiest way is no, I cannot delete that point now that we created the curve in this way the easiest way would be to introduce a center line somewhere in the middle make it be parallel and keep the tangency handles with um, coincident with the line if it allows me I'm not sure if I can uh, I should yes come on I'm on distance Okay, 
works with angled shell. Let's try again. Hmm. It's a bit weird. Okay. So I do select the point. Yeah, okay, fine. So let's try point again now. Okay, angle. Angle 180 to make sure that those tangency handles are actually horizontal. And in this way, this curve will be tangent to that horizontal. And this should eliminate, yes, the seams that we have in there. Now, let me see if I can do it by removing the point at the end and use replace empty now and uh, use the line at the end of the curve it may not work anymore unless i delete the coincidence in here i move the end point and I will I will have to reset the tangent handles afterwards I don't like that so I don't think I can remove the point <laughs> okay let's trim entities not corner trim keep trimmed we have a few options in here I think I was selecting trim to closest, but I need to introduce another line. Maybe power trim. Now, and if I'm moving the yeah, I, I will need the line no matter what. to tell SOLIDWORKS where do I want my uh, my curve to finish. So if I'm using a line, I think I could introduce a point. Anyway, let's try again. Let's trim this. Uh, not corner power trim, let's see. To closest. No, it doesn't want it. Ah, because it was power trim. There you go. So now it works. So if I'm trimming this and yes, and introduce another line, center line or construction line, whatever is this called. And now if I'm selecting the tangent in here, okay. That's a bit weird, I just had it there. So again, I am because I was having a constraint. So now let me go normal to yes. It was already constrained. Anyway, so if I am, come on, where are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, behaving a bit weird. Well, yeah, so it will allow me only to only to move it around not sure if i can select it and say to be vertical or whatever but if you are in a situation in which you cannot really you, you don't understand how to change them anymore or they just don't listen to you you can select it 
and replace entity with the new curve make construction okay and leave it or delete it afterwards and just to prove the point now being replaced if you are in here you create a line in here and if you select this and this we should have the sign for make tangent so now it is tangent at the line okay i think i pressed control something and there you go save the document without rebuilding with build and save continue and without save anyway okay so let's go back in the sketch that i had before right so being tangent now it just follows the line that you have in here now let's go It just doesn't want to listen, does it? There. All right. So by modifying the curve that we have it in here, finally, and by being tangent to the horizontal line that we have in here, for example, when you make the symmetry, you will have no problems whatsoever. But yeah, replace entity. If it doesn't listen anymore, make it tangent and it should be all right. All right, so let's go out of the sketch, continue without error. All right, so something is happening in here because we modified a few things. Let me press Ctrl Z a few times. Okay. Okay, so yeah, because we replaced the uh, the curve, then it will be difficult for SolidWorks to understand um, where the other fillets would be. So let's leave it like this for now. Because anyway, the point is understood. And let's see where do where uh, where else we have seams, right? It looks like we have seams around here. We need a better view, really. This is not really giving us good view over the seams, and then we will need a better quality of the surface as well. So let's try to get. Not something still black, but maybe this now. I post now something that we can see some of the seams better. Now I will keep it like that, but this time I will go in real view graphics and. Yes, and I should see it in reflections. I'm not sure if you see it. Yeah. Zoomed in so you can see those seams. Then there is also the quality of the surface. So if we go into Edit, no, Tools, Options, and we should have it in image quality, yes. So I usually go right to the high on both of them simply because I do want to have the best uh, quality on the surface that I can because by having that I will be able to after I import them in 3ds max um, to have less surprises Right, so the seam is visible there. Let's fix that seam. Let's see the sketch. So we have this just like before. Where are we? Ah, yes. So here, 
how do we want to do it? Let's try this time a different method. So deleting that point in there. I go in here. I do want to reset the handles. Go with this like that. I grab this point in here, bring it closer. And here I will put the center line horizontal. Should detect it, should detect to be horizontal right away. Yes, so this should be horizontal in here. Just checking to see. Okay, I click on the horizontal to make sure. A bit confusing this construction. Now, the next thing that I will want would be for this point in here to be coincident with with one of whatever axis. So yes, so if I'm selecting anything in here, or the axis or a plane, for example, and make it coincident to be sure that it's right in the middle, it's just fine. And now, uh, just don't select the right things. Now, if I go into here, right click, make coincident, um, tangent, not coincident. And now I am perfectly fine to modify all this and it will be tangent. Obviously, I try to keep it below the point in here, below the end point where the symmetry will be. Now. Another thing that could be useful, it becomes quite tricky to first see all this and secondly to control it even more. So what I was doing, and it should still work, I was selecting the middle point of the curve and the line that I have in here and I was introducing a dimension between the two. Do I have any options in here? That's, no, I don't. So let's select the dimensions, not horizontal, vertical. Let's say it to him exactly what it is. maybe between the points. Oh, yeah. So it should work with the point there. But you have to drag. So after you select the curve, you have to drag um, in, a diff in a direction so that you can actually get the right point. Um, right, so we have 0 0.4 in here, but it's still a noticeable difference. So if I'm selecting 0 0.25 millimeters, there. So a bit more precision. And it should be just fine. Now I'm modifying just the end point and it should be a bit better. Anyway, we can still modify this in space. It's not uh, fully constrained. Let's get out of this. That's why we don't need to spend all the night trying to do that. Hide in the sketch or the sketches and just look again of at this. All right, so here is fairly straight. Am I in the wrong direction? With the curvature, possibly. So if I am selecting, no, I'm not. I'm just too far. Let's go and modify this. Or even better, remove the constraint that I have here, the dimension, and do it straight in 3D. 
after all that's why we we applied all that now that it is in tangency I can just move the points right in 3d and I would be able to see the results fairly fast it will still require to adjust the tangent handles or if you go into the sketch and you say reset it will but we can just go from closer to closer come on yeah okay ignore error let's do this let's get into the sketch and reset the tangents reset all handles there you go so now unfortunately after you move the handles reset all handles and yeah and maintain internal continuity but that's kind of it you will have to reset the handles afterwards uh, a bit unfortunate but yeah it is how it is okay so this should be a bit better yes so now it's closer to what we want curved at the back curved at the front no seams let's see what's happening here the surface the surface that we have in here so this is a surface extrude and it is with a free form right so it is with a free form as long as we are upside down in here isn't it yeah so we just need to get those handles and either get them closer in here or lower um, well in this case is actually higher so let's move them around so we don't see that kind of a surface in there now the the thing with this option in here curvature is that you don't really have a control for the length of the segment to be applied or the value or anything so it is just curvature and you will have to deal with it afterwards so it may not be in this case the best option anyway so for now we keep it like that we will be able to modify it afterwards even more we can always cut it in half and join it we can do so many things um, right it's still a bit annoying that despite all that you, st you still need to to do it like that. so let's see if we put it on movable obviously we'll have this in here so if we just increase this and adjust the the handles will it work a bit better it does look like it would well, let's see is it yes so keep it in curvature is not so ideal compared to leave it in um, as a movable thing let's do the other one as well And instead of curvature, keep it unmovable. Just extend the handles to be sure that it will uh, 
we control the, the tangency. And yeah, I want this like this. And this like that. Yep. And it should be easy peasy now. Nope, we still have the seams. Yeah, so difficult and it doesn't work. It works with symmetry, but it, it becomes harder with symmetry. So you can always cut the, some parts of it and then just join them or we can try tangent. It may be less Yeah, less harsh. All right, so tangent being in tangency right there at the symmetry line did the trick. Okay. Well, you'll have to see what's, what's best depending on the scenario really. But yeah, now we have a few ways of creating all those. So it's not like, um, It is. It shouldn't be so hard to to choose afterwards. Just thinking right now, what else to do before we end for today? So we have all that. We could try to make the fillets, but to make them manually will take longer than I have this evening maybe I can adjust more just for the sake of it yes so if you look in here we'll try to draw one other using the pen on a different screen so if you look in here right so this this curve in here let me get the the glove for the screen here so this curve in here is not like this, right? So it does have something like this, right? So being like that, if I want to create something similar, now that freeform thing becomes quite useful, right? So if I'm going to the freeform surface and I want to modify it, how could I do it? Well, it's, I don't necessarily need a, um, a curve right in the middle of the surface. I could do that. What I can do is really selecting the tangents, the, the tangent lines that I have in here and just move them around, right? So towards this end, I can move them like this, it may be too much, but we will see. And towards this end, I can move like that. Okay, now if I go out of it, there. So we have them following more or less that kind of shape. I still need to be a bit more Yeah, a bit more curved here in the front. So I can definitely do that by selecting this tangent, ha tangent handle and make it more towards curve in here. And this one as well. You know, I'm moving everything in 3D, so it's like uh, I'm just kind of guessing around, but it's good enough for now. Now, the only thing that I can see is that it's a bit too wide right here in the front, so I don't like that. All right, let's go to the top to see it a bit better. 
Okay. Yes, so if I'm selecting uh, the points and the tang tangency handles, by the way, you have to select the tangency handles. If you move the points only, the tangency handles will remain in where they are. <laughs> so you will just get a more curved surface. And now I'm just moving this around to get this whole object not so wide in the front. Okay, something like that. All right, I just finally remember that I could use Alt to um, rotate like this around the model. Finally, it starts to come, uh, my memory starts to come back around how to use uh, the SOLIDWORKS after about three months. Um, right. And that would be the main shape before adding the fillet. So most probably tomorrow or in the next few days, what I'm going to do is starting uh, adding those these fillets here at the bottom manually so that they blend in nicely with with the surface that we have in here with the curved surface that we have on this side, right? And uh, then afterwards, finally, we can go uh, through doing all these things that we have in here at the top. And uh, yeah, and this these parts here will be the most complicated bits, the transitions that we have in there. After that, it's all just cuts and nothing else than that. But yeah, um, so uh, good. I hope uh, all this is quite useful for you. Um, Maybe it isn't, whatever. Um, at the end of the day, I would like to find out. So um, it wouldn't be nice not to be useful, but equally, if, if you believe it isn't, do let me know. And um, maybe I could present something that it is useful. But if it is, I'm, um, I'm really glad. And um, yes, please like and subscribe. It would help me in the future. And um, yeah, stay tuned. Um, we will, I will draw all this and I will uh, do all the surfaces um, until I finish the object. So I'm sure that seeing my journey and despite I have to remember things in SOLIDWORKS, I'm sure there is uh, quite some, some good stuff to be learned uh, in there. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time. Enjoy your day. Bye.